So, uh, Max, can you say a little bit about yourself and your, your background? And what, what's your opinion on the idea of the rise of massively intelligent machines? How, how do you think things will work out? Well, my background is uh, going from the States, uh, coming to university, having a great interest in science as a lab, um, going to MIT, and went out of engineering in the 60s. The age of space age was full on. And, uh, I was very excited about that. And it was until in that period the space shuttle was already being the top development of tentative designs of them, of the space shuttle. And uh, also, of course, uh, uh, computational sciences were growing rapidly. But we were just using all punch cards and to yeah, yeah. several yeah. programs. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and didn't have direct access to the computers. We just submitted our punch cards and they were run through them and got your, your results of the program that worked out with the program. But I never went heavily into uh, IT. I uh, was more interested in aeronautics and aerospace. But then also I had this uh, call to the priesthood in the middle of all that. And, uh, so I completed my studies with a master's degree and, uh, and went off to Rome. And uh, the ironic thing is that uh, coming from a, a working class background, uh, I never flown in a plane until <laughs> I got on the plane to Rome after having done a master's degree in aeronautical engineering. So, uh, but anyway, my feeling about, well, obviously it's a positive thing, it's, it's a remarkable... Do you think it's obvious? It's positive? I, I think overall it's positive. It, it's like anything in human history. Something is, is created, it can be used for good or, or, or bad, good or evil. Uh, it's human morals that have to be involved in, in the way they, they uh, manage these uh, developments, uh, even from the most simple artifacts or tools, they could have been turned into weapons and used for uh, manifesting on the you, you, you don't see possible problems these machines become hugely superior to us? I mean, no, okay, that's, that's a philosophical question. I think that um, basically, uh, it's done as, what do you understand by superior? Do you mean they can well, do a calculation or put yeah, they, they can think a million times faster than we do. They could have virtually unlimited memory. Uh, once, once neuroscience understands what intelligence is, and we take those ideas, put them into machines, speed everything up, it's pretty scary. It, well, it, it can be scary, I, I, I agree to that, but it's always going to be the human intelligence at the end of the line that's going to interpret, manage and interpret these machines, and they will be an extension of our intelligence. I think that will never be, will never be different than that. I mean, granted, bad things can happen. I can, I can understand that in the sense of if uh, they're controlling uh, objects that are destructive or whatever uh, that they go out of hand. They could, uh, but it will never be in the sense that they are, they are moral persons as we are. Mm -hmm. um, because that presupposes the kind of intellect I don't think machines can ever have this. The intellect of conceptualization and of identifying with the concept. This is something I think is unique to human thinking. Uh, we look at things, we categorize them, we're still categorized, all sorts of stuff. A machine will never think in that way. It will always be dealing with some kind of input that we've put in there that is interpreted of uh, something we think about ourselves. So so that is significant, significant of what we are thinking about. But it will never grasp it as, an, as a self-known subject. And therefore, it can't be a moral subject either. Do, do you anticipate, as like, sort of see what it's called, like immediately, if this is human level intelligence, yeah. this is machine level intelligence, yeah. and it's the home robots, uh, people update their home robots every year, so their intelligence keeps rising. So this gap is from human level. Machine, because that gap closes, you can imagine a species dominance debate. Mm -hmm. So, do you anticipate that the theologians will, will get into, into this debate? Does, does, does the rise of machine intelligence does that have an impact on theological questions? Do you imagine? Well, it will be a subject of thought for sure. I mean, um, I think uh, certainly the Catholic tradition of theology is always prepared to address new developments and, and look at the, the uh, 
the positives and the negatives of those developments and see whether they are in some way enhancing of our humanity or the detriment of our humanity and so on. That will always be a debate for sure. But I think that, as I was saying before, that we're dealing with two different kinds of understanding of intelligence that, that are not, they're not in the same line. And, and in some ways they might compete uh, in terms of uh, management, so to speak, if you like. Could they get back at us? Could they begin to do things that we lose control of? Mm -hmm. That may be possible, but it's not as a knowing, understanding subject that that would happen. Uh, it would be as, as a machine. I, I'm convinced that no matter how sophisticated these um, computers get, they have no more self-awareness than the washing machine. <laughs> uh, and if you look at certain schools of philosophy, that even the ancients addressed these things in a way that we fail to many times. We're very empirical. We're very empirical. We constantly think in terms of quantitative uh, realities. Uh, we don't try to grasp the, the qualitative, the, what makes our cells different than other animals. But I think even though we are so related to other animals, we are distinct, we are clearly distinct. And there are certain acts that reflect that. Language, okay. free choice, I believe in freedom. Okay, it's limited freedom, it's not absolute freedom, but there is a, there is a certain thing which we can call deliberative choice, and that is based on a kind of grasping of what things are and evaluating things and of course rational. Computers do the rational bit because they know how to, no, I see. They, we can make them so that they make uh, deductions. They, they go from one thing to another through a computational uh, method. But at the end, they're not understanding the final result. They're not grasping what does that really mean. That's my opinion. I've thought about it. And as I said, I'm not an IT person, but um, I've, I've thought about this from the point of view, a philosophical point of view. Have, have you heard of any theological debates coming from the church at maybe very high levels on this growing topic? Personally, I, I believe this issue will dominate our global politics this century. As, as, as that gap closes, it mm -hmm. become very, very real. Well, it's starting to happen in the media, mainstream in the US yeah. this year, 2011. Yeah. So probably it's only a question of time before the church, I mean, Rome, well, gets, yeah. gets involved. Yeah. That's very, very possible because uh, it, the church is not indifferent to those things. If it worries people, it worries the church. Yeah. And, um, and uh, but then there are different ways of understanding the problem. That's the whole thing. The way I see it is, is that, yes, there, there can be a, a problem there, there can be a danger, uh, there's an issue, uh, but uh, it's not because these machines will really sort of become superior to us. You, you don't see that no, possibility? No, not, in the, not in, the, in the true sense of the word of superior. We are of an order of being that they cannot simulate. Because, well, it's the old thing of body and soul. Okay? And neurophysiologists keep working on this. They try to figure out what is it that makes us, you know, Karl Popper and these people philosophizing about it. But the point is that, um, you know, they, they, uh, they never get to the, to the bottom of it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's elusive. And, and, um, and I say well, that's, that is precisely because we have a special place in the universe, and that's where my faith comes in. And I say, well, you know, we are the object of God's love. Of the reason why the whole world exists, the whole universe. People might think that's absurd, but I, I'm convinced of that. I think that there wouldn't be a universe if it wasn't meant to be for us. Mm -hmm. I'm very open to the deeds. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's really good. Um, I think I've almost run out of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> you can I'm, off the, I'm off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>